Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and in this video, I am going to be showing off a new feature in HDR Light Studio 2.0 called Composites, which is a just really fantastic new feature, actually. It allows you to do all kinds of things, um, but one of the things that it can do is allow you to put unlimited lighting setups in the same scene, essentially. It lets you experiment with lighting in a much easier way. And so in this particular moto scene, I've got these three Pixel Fondue uh, soda cans filled with nice warm cheese, I guess. And uh, it's being rendered in Octane over here on this side. Um, pretty high res, like 4K, so you can see all the little details there. And you can use Moto's render with HDR Live Studio. It'll also work with V-Ray, or will work with V-Ray. So it's a really flexible program, uses all the renderers that are available for Moto. And uh, like I said, it allows you to do multiple lighting setups. So you can experiment with the color and quality and intensity of lights and different reflections in different places. If I jump over to After Effects, I can show you really quickly three different lighting setups that are set up in the same scene. So, you know, here's one, sort of a warm looking light, some, you know, warm colors in the lights and warm reflections. Reflections mostly on the edges, and so the middle is sort of one sort of bright reflection, but it's sort of nice uh, fill in the middle here. And if I transition across to this next one, you can see the, the lighting is um, quite a bit cooler, really just sort of a white light, and uh, the reflections are in different places. And if I, again, proceed again, this is a much softer lighting setup. Uh, it's also colored. We've got some blue coming over here and some magenta. There's a little bit of yellow in there as well. And you'll see there's no like real uh, streaky reflections across the front. I'm like um, this one, you can see these hot reflections there. And on the first setup, the reflections are in different places. Again, if you look at the middle of the can here, the reflections are on the sides. So there's this sort of soft reflection lighting up the middle and these colored reflections on the sides versus this one where there's no real reflection in the middle and uh, the reflections on the sides are a little bit closer in, sort of on the three-quarter of the can. So yeah, lots of different uh, colors and quality and, and intensities and positions of the lights and in HDR Light Studio, that's all in one scene. So let me show you how you do that. So I'm back here in Moto and I want to fire up HDR Light Studio. I've got this Octane viewport open here on the right and the regular advanced view on the left. If you want to know how to integrate the Octane viewport into your standard Moto layout, uh, there is another video on uh, Pixel Fondue that shows you how to do that. Just do a search for it or maybe I'll link it in the description. Uh, okay, so I am actually going to simplify the scene just a little bit for faster feedback within uh, HDR Light Studio because this these ice chunks down here have a lot of refraction and dispersion and some pretty heavy things going on I want to get really fast feedback um, initially so I'll turn those off and uh, you know I'm just actually I'll turn off a couple of cans here and I might uh, turn off the uh, drops on the can as well let's see lots of drops so there's two types of drops there's these large um, uh, mesh drops here then there's also uh, some stencil drops on there as well for the really finer ones I'm going to turn them both off and we just have our purple can and in order to fire up HDR Light Studio over here under shading, you just it's all down here on the environment item. So you click that and you'll see the controls here. You pick your renderer. In this case, I'm going to pick Octane. You can go V-Ray or Moto. So I pick Octane. And I last thing I want to do is just you know click in uh, the 3D viewport so HDR Light Studio knows where to kick it off. And then hit start. And that's going to fire up the program. It's going to bring the scene geometry into HDR Light Studio. And it also knows what renderer to start with. So in this case, we're going with Octane. And this is the canvas here. And so this is essentially the um, HDRI image in the environment tab that is wrapped around your scene. So the lat long 360 image, that's the canvas right here right now. It's just the standard gradient. But if I look over at Moto, you'll see there is now a slot there and this HDRI temp raw file. It's essentially a live link to HDR Light Studio. So any changes I make to that canvas over in HDR Light Studio will be pushed over to Moto and do that live link uh, temp image. And then when I'm happy with whatever, I can just um, render out individual HDRIs at high res from within HDR Light Studio and use those to light the scene. All right, so I'm gonna fire up my renderer here and I'm gonna fire up Octane here in HDR Light Studio. All right, there's one last thing you need to do and you'll notice that there is a drop down to apply a LUT or a lookup table to the output in this viewport here and it defaults to sRGB and that's normally fine. That's what you would have if you're using the motor renderer. But because we're using Octane, I'm just gonna pause this real quick. Octane is already doing that. So we go back over to Moto 
you'll see that um, it's a little bit darker here. And the reason is if I click the uh, camera icon in, on the imager tab, you'll see that the response curve is already set to sRGB by default. So it's applying an sRGB uh, response curve in Octane already, and it's feeding that output to HDR Light Studio where it's getting that curve applied again. So what we wanna do is just make sure we turn this to none so we're getting this curve only applied once. So now our HDR Light Studio is matching up with what we see in Octane and Moto. All right, let's start adding some lighting elements to the scene so you can see how composites work. Uh, this background gradient, default background gradient, I like to think of as sort of a giant fill light. It's a really good starting place for how you want to light your scene. Right now it's just really evenly lit, obviously. And you can adjust the gradient over here with these parameters. You can change colors, uh, you know, do whatever you want like this or you can adjust the values by just dragging on these sliders here and bring that up or down, or I could double click and, and add um, a new value like this. And I can even go in and, and adjust my, my curve here. So it's pretty cool. You do all kinds of stuff with it, but it also comes with a bunch of presets. So over here, there's sort of a, a filter list for different presets. If I go to gradients, um, there's all kinds of different presets that I can just right click and apply to this. So I can apply that preset. So there's the preset and you'll see it, it has a pretty big um, impact on the lighting of the scene as well. So it's quite a bit darker and I'm not getting uh, that overall fill light, which is fine. So I'm gonna light this with some reflective lights. And so I'm just gonna click over here. I can get a rectangular reflected light. My light paint um, is set to reflection. So where I click on my geometry, it's gonna place the light on the canvas in order to place it as a reflection on my geometry. So I click right there and I'm gonna get a reflection right there. I can control the light with any of these icons. I can adjust the scale. I can, you know, stretch it out width-wise or height-wise. I can rotate it. All kinds of cool stuff you can do. And you can immediately see your um, results up here in this window, which I really like. And I can even, you know, right-click and say I want to duplicate that. And then maybe I drag that over here. And, you know, I can adjust the uh, rotation. We'll just do a negative 26, sort of go the opposite direction here and get it on the other side. So here I'm sort of building my um, light scene, right? My lighting scene. And to get these symmetrical, if I, I can right click and, and select, um, I can also, if I if I left click, it's going to drag it around. Control Z to undo, but I can right click to select between these two, or I could select over here in the list. Now keep in mind, we're not dealing with X, Y, Z coordinates in HDR Light Studio. We're dealing with latitude and longitude on this lat long map here. So if I'm dragging the slider here and I'm increasing the latitude, I'm actually moving it down. If I'm going to the negative range, I'm moving it up. And likewise, longitude, if I go far to the right, I'm actually bringing it over here to 359. It goes from zero to, it's a little hard to kind of wrap your head around at first. It goes from zero to 359. So 359, far left edge. If I go over to zero, far right edge, and then 180 is in the middle, right? So if I had it over here, and I've got this reflection going on right here, and I want to make this one symmetrical. One, I want to get the latitude the same. So in this one, the latitude is negative 16. We'll just call it negative 16. And I want to select my other light, and I want to call this one negative 16. Bring it up symmetrically in latitude. In longitude, here, remember, 180 is in the middle. And so we're at, we'll just make this simple. We'll call this 280. So I'm 100 degrees to the left, that means of 180. So this other one, I wanted to go 100 degrees to the right of 180, which is, you know, 80. Now they're symmetrical, right? 180 is the middle, this one's at 80, this one's at 280. Plus 100, minus 100. So you gotta wrap your head around that a little bit if you wanna um, understand how these work. But uh, anyway, so now I've got a nice symmetrical um, look there on both sides of the can. Let's say I want to get a backlight to sort of illuminate the ground that it's on. So, and if I'm going to do that, I'm going to change my light pane mode to rim lighting. And I'm just going to add, let's say, a, a, a circular area light there. And when I click now in rim lighting mode, it's going to ignore the geometry and it's going to just put it on the canvas. So I want to get it behind this guy. I'm just going to click right in the middle here. And you'll see it's starting to light up the center a bit. And I'm going to crank up the intensity fair amount in the sky and make it quite a bit bigger and maybe even move it uh, up in lat uh, latitude a bit. Here I'm getting this sort of, that's a little too much maybe, maybe not quite that much. Here I'm getting this sort of backlight 
So the white is behind the can, but it's illuminating the ground, which is what I want. Whoops, don't want to move it that way. I want to move it this way. So it's nice to tweak it with these. I actually would like to see using the arrow keys, sort of like in Photoshop, to um, tweak these left and right or shift arrow keys to move them up and down. That'd be a really nice feature, I think. Uh, but here I've got this, this backlight coming in. And again, I can increase the uh, intensity a little bit. I can even drag over here, right? So I can uh, drag on this one to increase intensity or the brightness. So I love these little draggy things here because I use a Wacom tablet and I'm able to really just, it's really nice workflow, like um, these draggable icons. Okay, so, all right, pretty pretty boring lighting. Let's add something else. We'll go over here to presets and maybe go to um, lights and we'll pick a light here. Uh, pick something with a little bit of color. Maybe we'll go with this guy. Just double click, bring him in. And again, I can go over to, um, this time I'm gonna do an illumination and I'm just gonna light up this side. So an illumination, um, it's not gonna place it at the direct angle to provide a reflection at that point. It's going to be positioned on the canvas to light in a more diffuse way. I'm actually gonna increase the size of this because really I just want sort of a soft diffuse light here. Get a little bit of color. Let me bump it up with just a little tad there. So I've got some lovely warm light coming in from this side. So why don't I do some complimentary blue, cool blue light over here on this side. Uh, so I could just add another rectangular uh, softbox there and then in illumination mode, um, just because I want a general light direction, not a, a hard reflection, click it over here. It's going to move that in on the canvas to illuminate this side of it. And then, uh, yeah, I can actually change the colors. We'll just do, a, we'll say, a gradient ramp. And I can even use presets for these. So there's some color presets over here. Oops, those are just flat colors. Let's see, there's some color ramps. You can just drag that over. So it, it's really pretty cool. You know, let's make this bigger. It's just so, you can see it coming in here a little bit, maybe a little more intense um, with the blue. It's just so intuitive. This interface is just so well thought out. And here, you know, it's sort of an interesting lighting. I've got some very blue on this side and very orange on that side, right? So we got something going on. All right. Fine, I'm going to um, do something different now. I'm going to shift select everything and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say merge to composite. And you see it put everything in one folder. Now this is just like pre-comping in After Effects. It's like grabbing a bunch of layers and hitting pre-comp if you're familiar with After Effects. Here I grabbed a bunch of lighting elements and I composited them into one layer. Now there's a little arrow here now so I can click that and I can see all the lights here and I can still adjust them individually. But because it's a composite, I can turn them all on and off at once. So they're, they're all off, put them all on. I can do things like adjust the uh, brightness or opacity all at once. We'll just crank them up quite a bit like that. Undo there. So there's a lot you can do to them, sort of, you know, gang these controls on them all at once when, when it's a composite. But I can also right click and cancel. Let me right click and say duplicate. And we can duplicate that uh, composite. Now they're on top of each other because they're both on. So I'm gonna turn off the first one. And I'm gonna go into the second composite and actually let me rename this first one. We'll just call it, um, we'll call it warm setup on right. And we'll call the second one cool setup on right. Okay, you can guess what I'm gonna do. So I'm in the second one here. I can right click on a light here in the interface. We just click here to get in the composite. My blue light selected, and I'm just gonna drag it over here on this side where this guy was, and I'm gonna drag my yellow light over here where this one was, and sort of flip flop them. So now I've got cool blue light on this side and sort of a warmish, orangish light. Let me just push over just a little bit on this side. Let me actually scooch this over and, and shrink this guy down just a tad. All right, looks cool. So I've got two different lighting setups now. Let me get out of the composite. Um, so I've got blue over here, and then on the other one, I've got blue over here. And so all of this is, again, it's being live linked back into Moto. So I want to go back over to Moto. And again, you see it, it's just, you know, rendering here, Octane's rendering and feeding into Moto. I can go over to the item list and turn on um, a couple more cans here. So why don't I do that? We'll turn on this one and turn on, uh, there's updating the geometry, and turn on this one as well. Although I'm gonna turn off the um, 
the uh, drops again just to get a little fa faster feedback because I have uh, a lot going on in those drops. There's just a lot of them and they have dispersion, which is which is pretty heavy um, rendering. So, okay, we got that going on here. So we'll go back over to HRLI Studio. So again, the scene's live. I can It's a live link. I can adjust my moto scene and, and come back here and, and, and uh, see the results. So that looks actually, looks pretty cool. That's some nice, that's some shiny, I got some shiny pixel fondue cheese filled cans there. All right, so, um, and there's really no limit to what you can do with these. So I can always, um, you know, continue on making new composites and new lighting setups. I can even make composites within composites. So here I've got my two um, left and right reflection lights. I can right click and merge those to a composite. And then we'll say I want to turn them both off, take a look with those off, um, a little bit dark. So I want to put those back on maybe, and I want to brighten those two up together like that too much probably <laughs> but you see where i'm going you can composite within composite within composite and you can blend together composites you can also turn them on and off and, and here we have multiple light setups within one scene so yeah pretty cool i can even um pause this here and load up another project file like the first one i had with multiple composites in it. so go over here to project open project and uh, would you like to save this one? No, but I do want to load up my earlier one with the rendered images I had shown earlier. And this one has three different composites. If you remember, here's the sort of warm one. Um, here is the sort of uh, soft one. And this one right here is sort of a cool one. And so there's a lot more you can do within HDR Light Studio in terms of setting up lights and I'll do more videos. But here I was really just trying to show composites. So if I want to show this uh, warm one here, I got it going, I just hit fire up. Uh, octane again and it's, it's just really immediate it's right there and then i can always again you can render out any of these canvases into high res hdra images that you can stack up on moto as well so pretty cool that's how it works that's composites or at least that's the very dipping your toe into composites there's a lot more you can do with them which i'll try to show in uh, uh subsequent videos but yeah the more i use hdr light studio the more i just can't see myself not using it um you know, if you're like me, you tend to just have a library of HDRI images that you would just sort of do a lot of guesswork and hope that they worked with your scene and you got something that looked marginally cool. Um, HDR Light Studio, you can still load those images from your library into the canvas here and then add to them or move them around or subtract lights from them, uh, do all kinds of stuff with them. But you just have so much more control over your lighting than you do by just loading up a random image and rotating it around and hoping something looks good. All right, enough for now. Yum, yum.